You have to get up and you have to put the work in because nobody is going to put the work in for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to turn your life around. So no matter where you are in life, whether you're in a great position, whether you're at a terrible position or any place in between, we're going to talk about how to turn your life around to create the life that you truly want. And before I do that, I actually want to tell you a story. And, uh, and I want to rewind you back to 2000. It was about October of 2010. And uh, of October of 2010, I had uh, lost everything that I had. My business was absolutely failing. I went from having $50,000 in my bank account to being negative in my bank account. I was five months past on my car payments. I almost lost my car and I was living in a one bedroom apartment down in Fort Lauderdale. I had no furniture inside of the house. And the uh, only thing that I had there was a bed that was in my room and then books that lined the living room uh, on the floor. And for two months, the only thing that I lived off of was pasta from Walmart. And uh, it was $1.88 for a box of pasta. I'm sorry, it was $1.88 for a uh, pasta can, you know, the glass ones that you can get actually. And then it was $0.88 cents to get a box of pasta. And I lived off of that for two months. And I was at probably one of, if not the worst place in my entire life, where I had this business that was successful, that was doing really well. And within less than a year, I lost all of it. And I had to go back home with my tail in between my legs and try to start over again. And I remember that feeling of sitting there of like, man, I'm pretty freaking close to rock bottom right now. And, uh, and then if you fast forward about six months from then, I remember the last really like down, 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 down moment of my life. Um, I'd just gone through a terrible breakup. I was working at a, a new job that I absolutely hated. And I remember sitting on the floor in my apartment, in my bathroom, just like sobbing like a child. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know where my life's supposed to go. And I remember that down moment, like the rock bottom that I was at. And I remember thinking to myself, no one is going to come and save you. If you're going to make something out of your life, it is only on your shoulders. I can't blame anybody else. I can't blame anybody else for my failure. And if I can't blame anybody else for my failure, I won't be able to blame anybody else but myself for my success later on down the road. And it was from that moment on, I decided to really take control and think, I am the only person that can fix this. I am going to fix it. Now, the reason why I tell you those stories is because if you fast forward now 10 years and you look at, it's very easy for people to look and say, oh, Rob's got millions of followers. He's got, you know, a business that's doing millions of dollars per year. And he's also got a podcast that has millions of downloads per month. That must be so nice. I wish that I was in his position. And they always see the success, but they never see all of the crap that you have to go through, the walking on glass basically to get to the position that you're at. And I want to tell you that no matter where you are right now, be the hero of your own story. And I always thought of my life, it's funny, I always thought of my life exactly like this. And, and what I want you to realize is when you look at someone who's successful or whatever, the, whatever you want to even categorize as success, I don't even know what I categorize success, as success. Maybe that's money, maybe that's happiness, maybe that's joy, maybe that's fulfillment, uh, whatever it is for you. I want you to realize for them, number one, it wasn't easy. And number two, None of that quote unquote success actually even truly matters. None of the followers, none of the money, none of the, the accolades that they might have, none of the things actually truly matter. The only thing that matters is how you feel about yourself in that moment. And as Tony Robbins says, to have success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. It's not just about money. It's not just about cars and clothes and all of those things. It's about being fulfilled with what it is that you truly want to do. And no matter where you are right now, I want you to see your life as a movie. And you're the main character of the movie. And I remember I've always thought of my life this way as, as, as I'm the main character. It's almost as if life is a game. A game where I'm the main character in a movie. And it's almost like the crowd is watching me. And I remember hearing Joe Rogan talk about this a few years ago. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that is the way that I've always thought of it. It's like the perfect example. And he says, you can turn your life around at any moment. You have to be the hero of your own story. And we love, like we love the movies that are the comeback stories. Like the movie, The Pursuit of, of Happiness, right? Holy crap, one of the best movies that's ever been made, in my opinion, where you can see a guy 
that's going through it and failing and failing and failing and failing. And then there's that moment where he's laying in a bus stop bathroom and he's crying and that's where him and his son have to sleep. And you're on his side the whole time of like, I can't wait to see what he's going to do. And then when he gets to the end and you see him get the partnership at the end and his life becomes successful, it's the first real step of him taking massive success and, and first real step of his life becoming massive success. And he goes outside and he's in all of those people and he starts crying and you literally feel for the guy because you can feel that emotion of just rooting for him and just, oh my gosh, it's so good to see somebody succeed when you know where they've come from. And what I want you to do is I want you to see your life as the movie. I want you to see yourself as the main character. I want you to think that every moment of your life is being watched by the crowd and they're on your side. They're rooting for you. They want nothing more than to watch you succeed. They want nothing more than to see your life be a success. And they're watching every single thing that you do. You know, they're watching when the alarm goes off in the morning. They're watching you. Are you going to wake up and do something with yourself or are you going to hit that snooze button? When you're sitting on the couch, when you know you really should be putting in more work or going to the gym or working on yourself or reading that book, are you going to continue scrolling through Instagram or are you going to get off it and make something of your life? They're watching. They're rooting for you. What are you going to do? You're the only one that can save you. You know, are you going to lay on the couch and watch some more Netflix or are you going to put some extra time into your business, put some extra time into your family, put some extra time into, you know, even though you had a hard day at work, come home, put the children to bed, take care of them and then stay up for an extra three, four, five hours and grind it out to create the business or the life or the success or the happiness or the joy or the fulfillment that you truly want. What are you going to do? Because nobody is going to save you. You have to be the person that's going to save you. But what if you imagined your life as people watching you, rooting for you, they're on your side. They want nothing more than to see you succeed. Therefore, it's not just about you. It's also about showing them the beauty of coming from nothing, of coming from rock bottom, of not being in the place that you want to be in and building something of, your, of yourself and them seeing that success. Because do you know what's super fulfilling and super uh, warms your heart up is knowing that you impacted someone else's life. What if you pretend that there's people watching you at all points in time and they're watching you, you know, is he going to get up? Is he going to, you know, make something of his life? And if you do get up and you make something of your life, maybe you're inspiring them to do the same. Imagine that there's people that are always around you. What are you going to do? Once again, no one's going to come and save you. You have to see your life as if you are the CEO of your life. And for those of you guys that have been following for a long time, you know what I'm talking about when I say that. The life-changing moment for me, personally, when I was younger, I was 19 years old, I hired my first one-on-one -on -one coach. I paid $500 a month to have a one-on-one -on -one coach to talk to him for 30 minutes every single week for 500 bucks. That was more than I paid in rent. I paid $350 a month in rent at that point in time. But I wanted to succeed so badly that I was willing to put myself in debt just to be able to get a coach to help me succeed. And one of the things that he said to me when I was really at like a low point and I wasn't following through and I was trying to break my bad habits and I was sleeping in and I was not hitting my goals and I was giving him excuses. He said, Rob, if a business fails, whose fault is it? And I said, it's the CEO's fault. And he said, if a business succeeds, whose fault is it? And I said, I guess it's the CEO's fault. So he says, if your life is a failure, if you look back at 85 years old on your deathbed and you see your life as a failure, whose fault is it? And I said, it must be my fault. And he said, yes. But if you look back on your deathbed, 85 years old, and you're sitting there on your deathbed and you look back and you think about how amazing your life was and how you came from where you were and went through all things that you went through and you see your life as a success, whose fault is it? And I said, it's my fault. He said, so you have to live your life as if you're the CEO of your life because nobody's going to come and save you. Nobody's going to want your success more than you. No one's going to want your happiness more than you. Nobody's going to want your fulfillment more than you. So you have to get up and you have to put the work in because nobody is going to put the work in for you. You have to be the CEO of your own life. So what are you going to do? The choice is yours. You could be where you are. And here's the thing. You could be in a, a, a situation that's rock bottom, that's absolutely terrible right now. The only way to go is up. You got to work your ass off. That's the only thing that you can do. You could be in that position. Or you could be in a position of what I like to call fat and happy. 
fat and happy as you're making good money. You got more, a little bit more money than you need. You're not rich by any means, but you got a little bit more money. You're able to take a vacation. Maybe you got a little bit nicer car. Maybe you got two cars. Maybe you take your wife out extra couple times a month. You're able to do the things that you want to do. And your life is not terrible as it is right now, but it's not what you can do. And you've got that burning desire inside of you of like, yeah, maybe I'm making 70, 100, $150,000 a year. And you're sitting on it. You're getting fat and happy is what I call it. Fat and happy syndrome, where sometimes it's easier to move and make, make, and push yourself to be great when you have nothing to lose, when you're at rock bottom and you're just trying to feed yourself and feed your family. Sometimes that's a lot easier to be motivated than fat and happy syndrome. Fat and happy syndrome is your family's fed, you're fed, you're taking a couple extra trips. You've been doing the same thing. It's super easy for the past seven years and you don't know what you want to do. You know that you're stuck where you are. You know you've got a mortgage to pay. You know you've got all those things, but it's not what you want. Can you still see that place that you're in as rock bottom in your fat and happy syndrome? The choice is yours. You can either stay where you are right now and that's fine. You can, you know, go on Instagram, watch some extra Netflix, eat all the stuff that you want to have that life. Or I'm assuming if you're here, there's something inside of you that's like, I want more. Well, I'm just telling you this, whatever that more is to impact more people, to have more, to, you know, to give more, to love more, to be more, to just expand as a human and have your consciousness and your personal growth as well. I'm assuming if you're here, that's what you want. So you can either take the safe route where you stay and you do the exact same thing and you look back at the end of your life and go, like, oh God. I wish I could have, I should have done more, not just work more, but I, I had more potential, man. That's scary to get to end your life and realize that you didn't, you didn't live up to your full potential. Or you could get to the end of life and say, you know what? I did everything that I could because here's the thing. You're going to die either way. You're going to be in that deathbed at some point in time, either way, how you leave, how you feel about your life when you leave is up to you. The choice is yours. You can stay in bed, sleep in, stay on Instagram, watch some extra Netflix, or you can put in the work, create what you've always wanted to create, be who you've always wanted to be, live the life that you've always wanted, impact others around you, help others around you, make the world a better place from who you are. But if you want to create greatness, you've got to be the hero of your own story. You've got to be the hero of your own story. Imagine everybody's watching. They're watching every move. They're rooting for you. They want you to succeed. They want you to be great. They want you. They want to see that success. They're here for you, man. Nobody's talking down to you. Everyone's here. You've got that corner. They're clapping for you. They're doing everything they possibly can. The time is now. It's time for you to put in the work. But it's up to you. The choice is yours. And I hope that you choose greatness. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you're not a disciplined person, the main reason why is because you have let your mind win most of your life.